Neil Diamond is a name that is etched in the pages of music history. It once commanded the air with timeless hits. However, the hit singer is not around anymore. Why has his voice fallen silent now? Here is the tragic truth behind his disappearance. The Rise of a Legend some people are just born to be artists, and you can tell by the effect they have on people. One such person is Neil Diamond. Born on January 24, 1941, Neil Leslie Diamond was brought up in a Jewish family in Brooklyn, New York City. Neil had been interested in music ever since he was little and had written his first ever song at the age of 14. Shaped by the immigrant roots and the hustle of urban living, Neil Diamond spent his early life in Brooklyn in some less than great conditions. Born to Rose and Akiba Keeve Diamond, Neil inherited a legacy of hard work and resilience, although it came with its own set of issues, such as financial scarcity. Neil himself has said the following when talking about knowing Barbara Streisand in his early days, We were two poor kids in Brooklyn. Brooklyn. We hung out in the front of Erasmus High and smoked cigarettes. His upbringing happened in various homes in Brooklyn, peppered with a stint in Cheyenne, Wyoming, while his father was doing his military service. Despite the frequently shifting homes, Diamond's formative years were rooted in vibrant culture. Educationally, Diamond studied at Erasmus Hall High School and then later at Abraham Lincoln High School. It was within these halls that he encountered future stars like Barbara Streisand and chess prodigy Bobby Fischer. Then came the rebellious teen years. At 16, Diamond received a guitar that would become a great catalyst for his artistic journey. It was a gift that sparked his passion for music during a life-turning moment at Surprise Lake Camp. At that camp, he witnessed folk singer Pete Seeger performing his heart out. This ignited a new passion inside him and became the very thing that propelled him towards songwriting as an avenue for self-expression in the future. Intrigued by the power words hold, Diamond began crafting poems. Initially, they were only used as a means to woo romantic interests. However, as his poetic prowess gained popularity, he started writing for other people as well, namely his classmates who wanted to pursue their romantic prospects. His summers were spent laboring in the Catskills, where he met Jay Posner, who would become his wife in the future. Despite an academic trajectory in pre-med at New York University, Diamond's true passion lay in the melodies, proven by the fact that he would ditch classes to go to Tin Pan Alley, where he would hustle to let some music publishers listen to his music. So when opportunity knocked in the form of a job offer from Sunbeam Music Publishing, Diamond seized it with both hands, forsaking his pre-med degree for a shot at stardom. Dropping out just before graduation, he embarked on a journey that eventually led him to make history as one of the most famous artists in the world. With a career spanning several decades, this 1941-born singer has ruled the entertainment and art industry for almost half a century. Looking at said career, it is not difficult to notice why Neil Diamond was such a big deal throughout his entire music career. The era was the 60s, psychedelic prints, miniskirts, and soul music were bustling. The likes of Elvis Presley, The Beatles, and Marilyn Monroe were dominating the entertainment and music industry. Amidst them emerged musical brilliance packaged with an unforgettable voice, Neil Diamond. His first recording contract, Neil and Jack, was in collaboration with his high school friend, Jack Packer. After a few successive songs, he signed as a solo artist under Columbia Records and released songs like Clown Town, which failed to make an impact. Although he was then dropped from Columbia Records, he continued writing songs under his own name. And finally, in 1965, he wrote his first successful top 20 hit for the Jay and the Americans titled Sunday and Me. Some time passed, and in 1966, Diamond released his first true hit as a solo artist signed under Burt Burns' Bang Records, which was titled Solitary Man. He went on to release a lot of successful songs, many of which were covered by various famous artists. Hit Hits like Sweet Caroline, Cracklin' Rose, and Forever in the Blues started his legacy, and he earned 10 number one singles. While his early career was characterized by the struggle to break into the industry and be known as a singer, and not just a songwriter, his later career was highlighted by record labels and legal disputes. Even through it all, he persevered, 
cementing his story as truly inspirational. His career has been defined by various prestigious accolades. These include awards such as induction into the Songwriters Hall of Fame in 1984 and the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2011. He has also received esteemed awards like the Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award in 2018 and the Sammy Kahn Lifetime Achievement Award in the year 2000 to commemorate his exceptional songwriting talent. With multiple Grammy Awards, which were received between 1973 and 2009, and Billboard Music Awards that he received between 1973 and 1974, Diamond's hits have solidified his status as a music icon. Furthermore, his philanthropic efforts, recognized with honors such as the Kennedy Center Honor in 2011, highlight his dedication to positive change and humanitarian causes. This is an artist's dream rolled into a pretty packaging. He now stands as one of the highest-selling artists of all time after selling 130 million records worldwide. However, the life of Neil Diamond has not been as smooth sailing as it seems on the surface. His personal and public life has seen some dark times, especially his personal life, which has been described as turbulent often. Personal Struggles Neil Diamond's journey has unfortunately not been devoid of heartache. The singer has been married a total of three times in an attempt to find and stay in love. In 1963, he got married to his high school sweetheart and friend, Jay Posner, who became a school teacher. She and Neil had two daughters named Marjorie and Elin, whom Neil absolutely adored. However, the couple separated in 1967 and went through with a divorce in 1969, effectively bringing an end to their romance. This didn't shut his heart off from the idea of love completely, because he, on December 5, 1969, got married to Marsha Murphy. Now, Marsha was his production assistant, and they likely grew close through their work. This couple had two sons named Jesse and Micah, but unfortunately, Neil could not escape the grim reaper of relationships yet again, because the marriage ended somewhere between 1994 and 1995. The end of his marriage with Marsha Murphy was marked by a substantial financial settlement, and it was rumored that the settlement was that of a $150 million payout. To put an end to the rumors, Neil himself refuted these figures and claimed that while the settlement was significant, it was less than the speculated amount. Despite the divorce settlement, Neil never said a single bad thing about his ex-wife and always had good things to say about her, even going as far as saying that she was worth every penny of the divorce settlement. Finally, Neil landed in the web of love yet again when he started a relationship with his current wife, Katie McNeil. The two met in Brisbane, Australia, and on September 7, 2011, Diamond announced his engagement to the 41-year-old Katie McNeil. Diamond himself was 70 years old during this time and said that this relationship was the inspiration for his 2014 album, Melody Road. Evidently, the two have an amazing relationship and they both share that through their social media. Despite there being a significant age difference of almost 29 years, their relationship is built upon deep understanding and mutual respect. Diamond himself claimed that he is very grateful to have finally found someone who is up to the task of being his wife since he is very high maintenance. A philanthropist with a good heart. Apart from a turbulent love life though, Neil mostly went through his career with little to no controversies and problems. He was described as charitable and a genuinely good human being and he left a significant mark on the world through his philanthropy. Throughout his career, Diamond has supported various charitable causes, including organizations that focused on medical research, education, and humanitarian aid. Aside from them, another notable cause he rallied behind was Parkinson's disease research. He held fundraising events and donations and used advocacy whenever possible to make sure that research efforts for this disease were advancing. These researches aimed to find a cure, or at least improve treatments for Parkinson's. That's not all. Diamond has also been involved in initiatives supporting education, particularly in underserved communities. Diamond truly shows that he cares for humanity, especially in times of crisis or natural disasters. This was proven when he stepped up to lend help to launch the Hands Up project of Artists for Life Hand in 1992. The prints from this project were then auctioned off to raise funds for the charity. On top of that, we can't forget how he helped the people of Texas, right? After significant damage was caused by Hurricane Ida, in 2008 in Oak Island, Texas, Diamond set up a charitable fund for the victims. Furthermore, Diamond's philanthropy also extends beyond monetary contributions. He has used his voice, power, and platform to raise awareness about social issues ranging from peace and equality to environmental conservation.
stardom. His fans who had the chance to meet him said that he was friendly but quiet, keeping to himself when needed. This also translated to his disappearing acts throughout his career. Neil would often take breaks for some me time, and to get away when things got a little too hectic, he surely had his priorities set straight from the beginning. Rather than staying in the public eye consistently, Neil preferred vanishing sometimes to get himself together and regularly took vacations from performing. Sometimes these vacations took years at a time. The most glaring example of this is the 1972 sabbatical he took from concerts. The New York Times announced his sabbatical from concerts for a few years, getting a few mixed reactions from the public since he was only in his mid-30s, which is the prime age for many artists. This break of his lasted till 1976. Explaining his reasoning to the Rolling Stone, he said, I had to get away because the insanity was starting to creep in and it was no longer a normal existence. Apart from his disappearances, his career was truly a sight to behold. However, there have been a few bumps in the road which Neil himself regrets and would like to remove from the timeline. Despite that, Neil remains one of the top-selling artists of all time to this day. His songs have created such a high impact that he can live off the rest of his life just through the royalties alone. Diamond essentially made a ton of money back in his earlier years. Royalties from just one of his songs alone are a man's dream salary for a year. The Rolling Stone mentioned that Diamond had made a deal with Music Corporation of America's Uni Records in 1967. That deal earned him $50,000 per album. This figure spanned across five albums from Neil. When that contract was about to end, he got offers of over $400,000 per album for a 10-album deal. Can you imagine? Even today, Diamond makes crazy amounts of money whenever someone downloads hits like Sweet Caroline. With a suspected net worth of about $300 million, it really should not come as a surprise though, as it is for good reason. His wealth is a direct reflection of how much influence he had over people, and how much he impacted the industry. What he achieved is something people cannot even dream of in their lifetime. His influence is still strong to this day, and can be seen during one of his recent appearances that delighted the fans. However, Diamond has had his fair share of bumps along the way. First and foremost, who you are. Controversies. The biggest example of one of these bumps is the controversial film, The Jazz Singer. The film came into existence when Lord Bernie Delfont, brother of film mogul Lou Grade and chief of Electric and Musical Industries Limited, had the sudden urge to make this his passion project. So, he wasted no time and brought the producer Barry Spikings into his office to tell him his vision. Spikings later revealed to Yahoo Movies from Los Angeles that the reason why this remake was so important to Bernie was because he was from Russia and came over to Britain at a very young age. Doing a remake of The Jazz Singer would mean a lot to them, as it meant a lot to him as an immigrant. Spikings himself was on the fence about this film because after winning the 1978 Best Picture Oscar for The Deer Hunter, he was unsure if this 1972 film remake was something he wanted to be associated with in the long run. He eventually agreed because he owed Delfont a great deal. Then, the producer, Jerry Leiter, met up with agent Tony Fantaz, who had recently taken over as Diamond's agent, and they ended up deciding to get the rights to do the jazz singer with Neil Diamond. This decision was followed by six months of preparation to get the movie rights and set everything up. When screenwriter Jerome Cass read the final script to Diamond in his office, Diamond loved it. With Neil Diamond set to not just star in the film but also be the songwriter, everything else seemed to fall into place. The plot of the film follows a cantor's son called Yusel Rabinovich, who is shown to be settled down with his childhood sweetheart Rivka, and is destined for a life in the synagogue. However, Yusel dreams of stardom, and he abandons his life to move to Los Angeles where he falls in love with the producer Molly, and becomes a star. The movie shows his conflict and attempts to reconcile with the past. As the filming for the remake wrapped up, a snippet of the film was shown at the Cannes Film Festival in May 1980, generating a good buzz. When the movie was released, though, it tanked. On December 19, 1980, it received a thrashing from the public and critics. Apart from the abysmal 26% on Rotten Tomatoes, Diamond had also done blackface in a certain part of the film, which left a bad taste in many people's mouths. The more thought-provoking thing is that since Diamond had signed his contract with Warner Brothers, he had gotten total control over the script. What went in and what was removed 
was based solely on his approval. Although Diamond won a Razzie Award for his performances, the singer never acted again. Despite that, he had several appearances on television shows and films. For example, in 1967, he was featured on the fourth episode of the detective drama Mannix. His part included being himself as an artist in a small underground club called The Bad Scene. His character gets interrupted during his singing, however, by one of the many fights that take place weekly on the show. Additionally, in the year 2000, he appeared on stage with a diamond tribute band, Super Diamond, springing a surprise before their show at House of Blues in Los Angeles. Lastly, in 2001, he appeared in the comedy film Saving Silverman, in which the main characters play in a diamond cover band. Despite these appearances, the blackface done in The Jazz Singer and the overall bad reaction from the critics and the fans is something that Neil is not likely to forget, especially since it was his first acting venture. He is believed to be very regretful for the performance in The Jazz Singer to this day, despite his initial excitement towards the script of the remake. Even though Diamond's career didn't stall after this performance, he did end up winning a Golden Raspberry for Worst Actor for the role. Yet, in spite of the reviews, the film's soundtrack was praised a lot by everyone and was dubbed the reason that saved Capitol Records that year, according to Barry Spikings. What is interesting is that the jazz singer is not the only controversy Neil would like people to forget. One of the greatest and most memorable songs in his discography, Sweet Caroline, was revived and came to light. How, you may ask? Well, it was not for very good reasons. In November 2007, Neil Diamond revealed something precarious that probably would have been better off as a secret. He said that the inspiration behind his famous song Sweet Caroline was an 11-year-old girl, not just any 11-year-old girl. No, it was an 11-year-old Caroline Kennedy, the daughter of John F. Kennedy. Diamond, who was 66 years old at the time of this interview, revealed that as a broke young songwriter in the 60s, he came across a cute photo of Caroline Kennedy in a magazine. He describes the picture as that of a little girl dressed to the nines in her riding gear next to her pony. He recalled thinking that it was such an innocent and wonderful picture that he was immediately inspired to write a song. Caroline Kennedy was only 12 when the song Sweet Caroline was originally released. Not only that, Neil Diamond went on to perform the song via satellite at Kennedy's 50th birthday party. This might have been a sweet sight to behold had it not been for the lyrics. Some parts of the song do not look like they should be written with a child in mind. Although Neil might have tweaked the inspiration for the song a bit, it still makes viewers uncomfortable to imagine such lyrics knowing that an 11-year-old was an inspiration for this. Warm, touch and warm, reaching out, touching me, touching you, bring more questions to mind when listening to the infamous song now. Fans have speculated about the weird nature of the lyrics after the revelation of the inspiration behind the song. Some believe there's more to the story, and the uncomfortable lyrics are not intended for the 11-year-old girl, while others stay clear of this topic entirely. As for Sweet Caroline, despite the murky inspirations, it is still held close to the fans' hearts. It has even become the Boston Red Sox baseball team's unofficial anthem. That song is now played during the eighth inning of every home game as a tradition. Fans enthusiastically sing along to the song to uphold the tradition. These controversies seem light in comparison to some of the controversies of Diamond's fellow artists, but they sure generated a lot of speculation and criticism for Diamond. In spite of that, Neil Diamond greatly remained in favor of the public and still held the love and appreciation of millions and millions of people, something some of his fellow artists cannot say for themselves. Despite Despite a life well lived, Diamond, like the rest of us, wasn't immune to life's tragedies. A tragedy struck. In early 2018, a piece of tragic and unexpected news emerged in Neil's life that sent him into denial. Neil was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. Despite that, acceptance was a difficult thing for Neil. After he appeared on Columbia Broadcasting System Sunday morning, the 83-year-old musician opened up about his diagnosis. He told the journalist, Anthony Mason, that he was in denial for the first year or two after his diagnosis in 2018. Despite his initial reluctance to accept this condition, Neil has shared that he has somewhat come to terms with the condition. In the interview, he told Anthony Mason that the hurricane in his life has calmed down and peace has settled in his life, 
which is why he has been feeling better since his initial diagnosis. He also added that he is easier on himself and the others around him nowadays, hinting that the diagnosis might have had a big effect on his mental health and mood swings. Although Neil has come to terms with this condition, it is unfortunate that there are some harrowing consequences to this disease. Life with a brain disorder is certainly not easy, and Neil will not be able to tour like he normally would because of it. His 50th anniversary world tour had to be cut short because of it as well. After touring in the United States and Europe for his 50th anniversary, he sadly had to announce that he would be retiring from touring. This news understandably brought discontent and sadness amongst his fans. Fans and well-wishers from all around the world were forced to reminisce about the singer's beautiful and long career, marked with top hits upon his retirement news. Recent Appearances On his recent 2022 appearance with a beautiful noise Broadway cast, Neil was seen singing his infamous song Sweet Caroline and the fans lost it. They are seen dancing happily, singing along to the rhythm, and looking excited as Neil holds the mic, as well as the crowd's attention. Everyone is seen having a good time, including Neil, who still sounds beyond amazing despite his health issues. Sadly, he cannot tour or do other things he would usually do now that Parkinson's has a chokehold on his life. Neil Diamond, however, will forever have a place in the fans' hearts no matter what. In essence, while Diamond's presence in the public eye may have dimmed in recent years, his impact on music and culture remains undeniable. He continues to navigate the challenges posed by Parkinson's disease, and his unwavering dedication to his art serves as a source of inspiration for fans old and new. Though he may no longer command the same spotlight he once did, Neil Diamond's music continues to resonate, ensuring his place in the annals of musical history. Neil has confronted a ton of difficulties in his professional and personal life. Regardless of the difficulties he confronted, his inheritance stays one of motivation and never surrendering. He likewise passed on to a ton of young artists. The information that, albeit difficult work and desire, are commendable characteristics. It's similarly important to take much-needed excursions and time off from the spotlight. Diamond has contacted the hearts of millions of individuals overall throughout his recognized profession, as well as making ageless tunes. Using his significant baritone voice, ever-enduring tunes, and verses that address audience members, he has an extraordinary ability to invoke emotions. Diamond's tunes, going from the perky Sweet Caroline to the intelligent Solitary Man, have been imbued with beauty. They act as soundtracks to endless recollections, summoning wistfulness and solace in audience members around the world. Indeed, even as he wrestles with Parkinson's, his music proceeds to elevate and rouse, helping us to remember the importance of imaginative articulation. Moreover, Neil Diamond's impact reaches a long way past the domain of music. His dedication to social causes has made a permanent imprint on society. Whether it's supporting clinical examination, education drives, or catastrophic aid ventures, Diamond has involved his foundation for positive change. His backing for Parkinson's sickness research, specifically, has revealed insight into a condition influencing millions around the world. What's more, Diamond's commitment to his specialty fills in as an encouraging sign for aspiring artists. His capacity to endure even with difficulty highlights the significance of enthusiasm and flexibility in seeking after one's fantasies. Regardless of the mishaps he has experienced, Diamond's relentless obligation to the mastery of his craft fills in as a demonstration of the groundbreaking force of music. As Neil Diamond proceeds to fight and endure the difficulties of Parkinson's disease, his effect on the universe of music stays, unmatched right up to the present day. Just think about it. What other place will you find such a special mix of voice and mood bundled together to frame sweet melodies such as Sweet Caroline? Who else is equipped to conjure such profound feelings that even after so many years, individuals are still moved the same while hearing his melodies? While he probably won't have the option to order a similar stage presence he once did, his tunes keep on resounding with crowds overall and are a wellspring of solace for some. From close acoustic exhibitions to self-important arena songs of praise, Diamond's music rises above limits, joining audience members in shared encounters of satisfaction, love, and yearning. Basically, Neil Diamond's journey is a demonstration of perseverance through the force of the human soul. He has stayed relentless in his commitment to his art. Through his music, 
he has contacted the existence of millions, leaving a permanent inheritance that will persevere for a long time into the future. The tale of Neil not being able to perform as he loved to do is tragic. The reason is even more so, but with the support from his family and fans, he is seen to be living a happy and content life. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next one.